So it's time to install CUDA toolkit and start coding. If you have not already, make sure to check out the introduction video. It has the acceleration basics concepts. Also, make sure to put some comments in the comment section below to make the YouTube algorithm happy and for better reach. With that out of the way, open your browser and search for CUDA toolkit. So you will come across this NVIDIA website and over here go to download now and choose your platform. I'll go to Windows 11 and I'm downloading the local version. So it's 3.1 gigabytes. I already actually have this. So let's open this. So just run the exe file and complete the setup. Also before this, make sure you have latest NVIDIA drivers installed. So it will first check your system and if everything goes fine, it will ask you to go through this agreement. And yeah, I can actually read that fast. So let's agree and continue. No need to go to custom, just go express installation and next. Well, I already had CUDA installed, so it is saying removing previous version. But for your case, it should start directly installing it. So it's no issue. Now once that's done, hit next. And that's it. The CUDA toolkit has been installed. So you can close the browser and you can open up a terminal we need to install some stuff so in my terminal first i have python already installed so this is my current python version and i have the corresponding pip also so once you have python and pip you need something called qpy so just search for QPy and you will be introduced to the QPy installation. From here, since we downloaded CUDA version 12, we can run this command. So I'll copy this and head over to my terminal. I already have it installed actually. In your case, it will take some time and install it. So now we have QPy. So in this video, we will learn about QPy. And in the next video, we will learn Numba. So QPy is a NumPy like implementation of arrays, but QPy exclusively works on the device. So once you have QPy installed, go to your development environment. And over here, I'm using VS Code, but you can use Jupyter or anything else. So if you are missing NVIDIA GPU on your system, you can also use the Google Colab. So over here, if I do import QPy as CP and run this, we'll face an error. So we don't have actually GPU enabled. So go to this drop down and change runtime type. Over there, select T4 GPU and save it. Once you have saved it, it will take some time to create an instance for you with the GPU. And now we have it. So let's try to run this. And as you can see, QPy has been imported properly. So whenever you are importing a GPU, the Google Colab will do everything for you, all the installation and everything. So excuse my setup, but my task manager will be sharing some part of the screen. So let's move on to Python and import the necessary libraries. So first I'll import numpy and then I'll import qpy as cp. So numpy, I'm expecting that you all know about numpy by this point. Numpy is the array implementation which is done on CPU or the host. And qpy is the same thing. So this is a copy of numpy but all the processing of qpy is done on the device or the GPU. So let's see how we can create an array on the host. So it's pretty straightforward. So in host, I'm creating np.array, then I'm passing in a list. 
So this list will be converted to a NumPy array and our X host will be a NumPy array that is being created on the host or the system RAM. But now if I do the same thing but with QPy library, so QPy.array then I'll pass in a list. So this will be converted to a QPy array. So this X device will actually be an array that is created in the GPU. So I'll just uh, put a print message for type of these two variables and let's run this. As you can see that the X host is numpy.nd array. Similarly, the X device is qpy.nd array. So your device or the GPU is connected via PCI to your host or to your computer. When I give command like this in Python, this actually gets executed in the CPU. So from the CPU, this instruction of creating an array to the GPU has to be carried over via the PCI Express. And also this data needs to be carried over there to create the array with this data. So whenever I am calling this, this is my acceleration tax. If you are not familiar with that, check out the introduction video. I have explained acceleration tax over there. So this steps takes time and whenever I am creating or reserving this memory, two things actually happening via the PCI Express. First, this instruction is getting carried over to create an array. And the second thing, the data itself is being passed to create the array with. So after both of these are done, we have a qpy.nd array which lies on the device. So let's see why this is exactly a costly operation. I'll try to find the Euclidean norm. So first, let's do it on the CPU. So I'll have numpy dot linear algebra dot norm. So I have used the keyword time it. It ran it multiple times and you can see 2.32 microsecond has been taken to execute this. Now, if I do the same thing, but on the device, so I'll do cp dot linear algebra dot norm and the device memory. So when I'm giving the command for the device, I also have to use the data that is stored in the device. So if I run this, you can see that the time taken is much more longer. It looks like the GPU is 50 times slower than the CPU. So what actually happened? We wanted to accelerate, right? But here we can see that the GPU actually took longer time. So why exactly this happened? So this happened because of the acceleration tax. So data transfer is not actually main concern over here as we have already transferred the data via this cp.array line. So our data is already stored in the device. So now when doing the computation, if you remember the metaphor of the bus and the car, the car was a racing car. So the car was much much faster. So our CPU runs at around 5 gigahertz. But in comparison to that, the GPU runs at around 1.5 gigahertz. So by default, the GPU runs much much slower than the CPU. So when the task is small enough, the CPU will always outperform the GPU. That exactly happened over here. So it was kind of disappointing, right? Like we went through this process of installing CUDA, installing QPy and setting everything up, but we ended up with a slower processing time overall. But not to worry, we will soon see how acceleration comes into play. Before that, if you have multiple GPU in your system, you can actually select which GPU to use whenever creating a QPy array. So, So if you have three devices, it will be indexed from 0 to 2. So 0 and 0, 1 and 2. Using cp.cuda.device and then passing in the index for your GPU, you can actually select which GPU to create the QPy array on. So I actually have only one GPU in my system. So if I run this, it will run fine. But if I change this index, it will throw me an error. So let's move on to acceleration. 
and not this acceleration why do we actually saw that we did not make any acceleration so our device runtime actually took longer so let's do our first proper acceleration so over here i am creating a numpy array on the host with the shape 20000 cross 20000 and all the values in this array will be integers ranging from 0 to 255 so whenever i create this you can see in the right hand side in my task manager that the ram usage has increased so let's create this array and as you can see this array has been created in my memory and the usage has increased so i have this in the host memory now i also need this on the gpu so i'll transfer it from my host to the gpu using cp dot as array method so cp dot as array will take any numpy array or any list and then send it to the device so it will also create an array in the device with the same data so if i go to my gpu and you can see that the dedicated gpu memory usage is currently flat so as soon as i run this we can see that this much memory has been used to create this x underscore device variable now this array is the same array which i have in the host so i actually created this array in the host and i transferred it to the device so both versions have same data now you can do the opposite if you have any array in the gpu you can take it back in the host so i'll just put some other name so that we can see that the memory usage has been changed so on the x underscore device array which is on the gpu i'll do dot get so if i run this it will return a numpy array and x underscore host underscore one is on the cpu right now so the ram usage has spiked again now this is how you can keep transferring data between the host and the device through the pci lan now we will use the fast Fourier transformation algorithm to see the result of our acceleration uh, before that let me just reduce the size of this array because my device don't have much memory to handle it so i'll just do 2000 cross 2000 and i'll run all of this so i have the same data in the device and the host so to compute the fast Fourier transformation on the host i will be using scipy.fft so scipy is a scientific python library with many such functions which are very demanding when doing computation so we have the same data in the host and the device let's use the host data to perform this fft on the host itself so i'll time it and as you can see that when the fft was running my cpu usage has a spike and this process took 67.2 millisecond on average so to get the implementation of fast Fourier transformation on the gpu we have to use qpy x so qpy x comes with qpy which mimics all the scientific functions from scipy and numpy for the gpu so once i have qpy x imported i can do qpyx.scipy.fft.ftn so if you remember before we did scipy.fft from that we imported ftn so similarly we are also doing scipy.fft from there we are accessing ftn but this time this is a qpyx implementation so this is a gpu implementation also we cannot give a host data to the device because for the device that data does not even exist so using the device data i will execute this and time it also keep an eye on the cpu usage so i am hovering around 35 percent utilization so as soon as i run this i am using the gpu 95 percent so yeah like uh, yeah, we are pushing the limits at this point <laughs> my poor system cannot handle so much but let's see what is the time
So once time it has run all of its iterations, we can see that on an average 16.1 milliseconds was taken. Like wow. Like really wow. Let me bring my calculator. So I'll do 67.2 divided by 16.1 and then I'll multiply this with 100. So we achieved 417% acceleration. Okay, that's something else. So how exactly we got this acceleration? In the first execution of the FFT, it was done on the CPU where the matrix has been given which was 2000 cross 2000. Now, so for all of this data, one by one execution has been done. But when you are doing the same thing on the GPU, we have thousands of CUDA cores and this qpy.x library has code written to efficiently multi-thread this algorithm. So, so in theory, we created one thread for one execution of the FFTA and like that we had n many threads and once the device data was loaded to the GPU and the instruction to run FFT was given at that time all this thread ran parallelly and even though the GPU has less clock speed than the CPU it actually could beat the CPU through parallel processing and that's how we can do acceleration. Now QPy is actually very limited library so if you want to accelerate any algorithm of our own this library is not going to get us very far. In the next video, we will learn Numba where we can write Python code and use just-in-time compiler to compile CUDA kernels for the device. And that's it for this video. Also let me know in the comment section how easy or difficult this video was for you. Thank you for watching this video. Thumbs if you liked it. Do share it with your friends and family. And make sure to subscribe for more content and let me know in the comment section below.